first. It's estimated that nearly one million people in the UK uh, is living with dementia. Yeah, and that's some very sad research. Suggested over half families caring for someone with a condition feel guilty for struggling to cope. Well, here to share his story in is music producer Naughty Boy, whose mum, Sahida, was diagnosed with dementia in 2016, alongside Dr. Sarah. Good morning to both of Good you. Good to have you Hi. Both with Thank us. you so much for joining us, Shahid. I mean, the, the maddest thing is, is when something like this happens to your mum, mm -hmm. it's just a massive blow, first of all, to mm. that's, that's someone who you love so very much. Yes. Tell us a little bit about your mum. Tell us a little bit about her. Um, well, mum's always been my favourite person in the world, and that hasn't changed. But, you know, there's a few things, like she had a stroke five years ago, and um, vascular dementia is a common side effect. After from strokes? From strokes. Oh, right. And mum's dementia, I'd say, kicked in, like, three years ago. Um, once she'd had um, a brain scan, we we knew something wasn't right, but unless until it's official, you just assume sure. it could be that, it could be something else. And um, once we knew, then the journey of dementia began. She, do you've noticed? What did you notice to start with? Is it the little things that, that she was forgetting, or forgetting? And because Mum still was still in rehabilitation from the stroke, yeah, we didn't know if it was, you know, she's just weak or yeah. she's. Forgetting because of you know she hit she hit her head, but once we knew then and, and you start looking googling and thinking oh this you you read about how bad it is your whole life changes yeah doesn't it? everything changed but there's always light at the end of the tunnel like never give up like you know when I found out that the better the eyesight is you can reduce the dementia you know the better the hearing is you could that because everything in here if Mum would go to sleep and when she couldn't see you all, the dementia goes nuts. Yeah. Because the hallucinations and seeing things that aren't there. But um, find, if anyone out there is looking after someone, find their safe place and everyone has one. Mum, with mum it was praying, um, it was feeding pets <laughs> to the point where she, over, she would ask everyone to feed the fishes, and then oh. the fishes started collapsing. And we thought, she what's was feeding wrong? them too much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love her. Um, and then also um, food. So um, mum stopped cooking, hasn't been able to cook since her stroke, but that's when I started cooking, because I was thinking, you know, it was, lo it was like COVID as well, lockdown, and everyone did something, so. So did you take some notes from your mum's cooking? Can you remember how she used to cook? Do you, you know cook what? like your mum? Apparently, I do. She says it's like these hands. <laughs> but I think mum um, cooked every day for us. That was mum's, mum was, you know, cooking sometimes twice a day for us. We never had like microwave meals and things. And, yeah. You know, that's, that's a luxury. Even though I was in a council estate, that was, you know, a big luxury. My dad can cook as well, but I think for me, it was a coping mechanism. If, you know, I was getting my mum's food sent to me um, in the studio every day. Like my Addison Lee bill was nuts, like <laughs> 4,000 pounds a month. <laughs> <laughs> and then suddenly your mum stops cooking, you know? And mm. for us, it was, that was life changing. But for mum, think of like, that's, you know, she's, a, she's a feeder. Part of her identity, Anyone that, yeah. That's why the, she over, overfeeds the fish, you know? That, and, and the culture as well. So what you're saying though, is that, that those little things that you can take as a family, as a son, Yes. And, the, and just the, to, to some sort of light and some sort of normality is the, is the key to kind of holding on to yeah. sanity of it all. Yeah, and a safe place. Yeah. And a lot of that with mum is musical memories as well. Like I could play a song from the, their wedding. Um, it's called Baharo Pulbar, so it's a famous um, Bollywood song. And whenever I could turn that on and mum's just eyes light up and she really? starts singing, yeah. And, you know, it's like she's there again. Yeah, everyone's dementia journey is unique. I mean, if I didn't reach out to Dementia UK in um, first lockdown, that's when, you know, my, my, my dad and brother were abroad. No one could come back. Um, my sister handles all my mum's medical appointments, prescriptions, so... And I'm the one that lives with mum, and I love living with mum, but... See, what, what, what would you say to, to people that are watching this that are, are starting to go on this journey that you're on, um, that... You know, the, the stats here says 23% of people who look after family members with dementia miss out on work-related opportunities. Well, how do you get that balance? How, what's your advice for people at, at home going, well, 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 you know, I want to be there for my loved one, but I've got to carry on with my life? 
it's easy to start thinking, I'm not a victim. If I keep talking about this to my friends or my work, you know, they're going to think, um, he's yeah. got... <clears throat> but to be honest, it's when I started talking that everything changed. It's when I started talking to people and finding out I'm not the only one and I'm yeah. not alone in this. Because during the first lockdown, I ended up calling the Admiral Nurses, myself, Paulette, her name was a lovely lady. And I have a living care for mum, Juliet, who's been mum's care for the last three years. And, but that one phone call, it just put my mind at ease. Because apart, instead I would be Googling dementia and you see all this. Yeah. But everyone's dementia journey is unique. That's what I've learned. And mum's on her own unique dementia journey. And you've been through a lot of carers as well, haven't yes. you? This isn't Initially. A, an easy journey to get a really good carer. It's no. been a long journey, hasn't Initially, it? Initially, went through, like, 13, but... And this is with family support as well, yeah. but it's just... Everyone needs to have that respite, that break as well. And I didn't realise that, you know, because during COVID, I was working from home as well. Sure. Oh, Shahid, your mum's going to be so proud, yeah. honestly. Yeah, she and really... she's... Um, she my, really... my next album is... Dedicated to her, Aww. it's called Heartland because, you know, what mum needs more than anything is love and yeah. that family love. That that's real love language. And but also, we've got Kara now. We've had for three yeah. years that mum loves as well. And Aww. Sarah, to give us some wider context on this in terms of like, like it's obviously a huge problem now, isn't it? If, yeah. if, if one in what is it one in six. It's one in 900,000 people have you? Yeah, so 900,000 people in the UK have dementia, one in 14 over the age of 65 and one in six over the age of 80. Um, now, we know that the numbers are increasing because life expectancy is increasing. So by 2025, we're expected to have a million people in the UK oh. with, with dementia. What are the signs when you... We have someone you love. What are the actual signs when it's happening? Yeah, so actually it's interesting that you mentioned that everyone's journey is quite different because everyone's symptoms can be different. Mm. There are over 200 different types of dementia. Mm. But a de dementia essentially works by affecting your brain's ability to remember, think, speak. Those are the three main things I think you say. So memory loss, um, problems with your thinking speed, your quickness, mm. your mental sharpness, even your mood. Um, and then in terms of speech, just, you know, difficulty finding words, difficulty you know, putting the wrong words into sentences and just yeah. not being able to kind of manage conversations as well as you used to. So if you, if you're, if you, if you, people are identifying with that, do you, should you go to see your GP? Is that what you should be doing? Look, I, I think there are a lot of things that can cause some of these symptoms, you know, in the short term, illnesses, medications, tiredness. But certainly if you are getting these symptoms persistently, progressively, you do need to speak to your GP. It may not be yeah. dement dementia, but it may be something we can, you know, we can cure or it may be something that we can help to treat. And slow down, maybe, with medication. Well, this mm -hmm. is it. So, although there is no cure for dementia, there are medications that help slow down the progression in some people. Mm. But the main thing in getting an early diagnosis is about support. It's mm. always about support. Supporting yourself, the person with dementia, and supporting the carers mm. around. Just very quickly, so what support is out there and what should people be doing? OK, so initially, when you get a diagnosis, you'll be getting um, a care assessment and a care plan, and then you'll get a needs assessment to see whether you're having troubles with... Things like, you know, dressing, cooking, cleaning. And once you've got those in, in place, um, your, your doctor and social services will be able to help put some more support in, in there. And the, for carers, you also need the support. As, as you say, places like Dementia UK, you need charities and voluntary organisations. You also need your GP if you're starting to feel low and not feeling like oh, you can manage yeah. it. Talking therapies um, and just, yeah, peer support. Yeah, and it's it's not all doom and gloom because when it, Mum's dementia journey started, I was just thinking, reading stuff, and just that anxiety that comes with that. You think you're expecting, yeah. but I when once Mum had a cataract operation in January, and she can see better. Um, I read a report that having better eyesight can reduce dementia by 30, 40 percent. But and I've witnessed that with Mum that it's yeah. because she can see better, the nighttime hallucinations aren't as much. Exactly. Because, and the hearing, mum has hearing aids, but everything, you know, yeah. it's not a cure, but it can, it makes mum... The quality of life. Yeah, right? yeah. and it improves yeah. the quality yeah. of life. And I, I want to be that son that can do whatever, you know, it takes. You're you know, an amazing so much son. And so many story, people will yeah, resonate with this story. So thank, thank you. For coming thank on. you. No, thank, and you thank you for having me. Thank you, Sarah, as always. Thank